it's uh, it's online camera on on point as always can we get everyone on the stage with me please there we go ladies and gentlemen and ladies um this is yvonne wakefield she's the founder of of caveat legal one of the most disruptive uh, legal firms on the continent uh, if not the world uh, one of the smartest entrepreneurs we've had the privilege of, of working with over the last couple of years and very grateful to you to have her here today to, to share with us from a, a female founder's perspective, just a little bit about her journey in building her, her really exciting company uh, over the years. Um, Yvonne, without much further ado, over to you. Thank you, Lo. Um, lovely to see you as always. Um, and I'm imagining that I can see all of you. Um, yeah, uh, lovely to be able to chat to you today. Um, while I was preparing for this talk, um, you know, I was thinking about, you know, the context women in business, and I kept being struck by how much we're expected to carry these days. Um, you know, have you ever wondered how our grandparents and their grandparents could possibly have thought of themselves as busy? You know, they lived lives at a much slower pace than we do. We, they assimilated a fraction of the input that we work through every day. Um, have you ever wondered how on earth we'll be able to survive with the exponential increase in information, responsibility, and expected output at an exponentially faster pace in future? In this day and age, what we are expected to carry is, is impossible, and it's only going to increase. And this used to keep me up at night, but thankfully not anymore, which is what I want to share with you today. Through trial and error, I've worked out three principles that, with ruthless application, have left me with extra time and space to play with, and a level of freedom, success, and contentment I had not imagined possible. What I've learned from my own journey um, is from my own journey. It's not necessarily specific to being a woman or being a woman in business, but I'd like to share it because it's been so profound for me, and it's the thing that most people comment on when they meet me and get to know me and, and the business. My business, Caveat Legal, is a virtual law firm, an Airbnb for lawyers, if you will. Um, we have around 50 top tier legal specialists who we make available to businesses through our online platform that re removes um, most of the bulk and cost that's usually associated with lawyers. Um, our business model was so robust that we didn't need to make a single change when COVID hit. And not only that, but we posted revenue growth of 65% that year, just in time to celebrate our 10th birthday this year. I'm also a single mom with three kids, a dog, uh, a functional-ish household, um, and I'm also the founder of an NGO that tackles gender-based violence. I've also survived a marriage plagued with addiction, abuse, and infidelity. Um, I've checked myself into Crescent Clinic for burnout, and I've been happily in therapy for a number of years. So what are these principles that make surviving and thriving in the overload possible for me? I uh, will set them out here. Number one, simplicity. In this life, I truly believe it's survival of the simplest. Simplicity to me means stripping out the non-essential, slimming things down and keeping them absolutely basic. Number two, design. Design every aspect of life for efficiency and freedom. This means being deliberate in building systems that work, moving things around and making iterative adjustments to achieve efficiency. And number three, consistency. Positive change, I've noticed, comes only from repeated and ongoing application of the same principles. Simplicity, design, consistency. So for each area of overwhelm for me, the process that I've followed has been as follows. I've stripped it of everything that is not either the thing that I want or in service of the thing that I want. I've designed and built exactly what I want with what's left behind. And I've followed this up by consistently re-implementing and reinforcing it every day. Simplicity, design, consistency. I believe that in future, our success and possibly even our ultimate survival will depend on our focus on these principles. It is going to be survival of the simplest. So let's have a look at this in more depth. I'll use two aspects of my own life to illustrate. First, in business, um, the key to the caveat business model is absolute simplicity. Simplicity for clients, simplicity for lawyers, simplicity for me and our other management team. Every decision is made with a view to reducing complexity. 
For example, I work to remove complexity and friction points for clients and lawyers every day. And I've also removed or outsourced all tasks that make my work complex or take me out of flow. The result is that Caveat is now a huge machine with no offices and only one employee on the payroll. That's me. Then in my personal life, um, the key to my happiness has also been absolute simplicity. I have removed all things that unnecessarily take time, like driving or energy, like draining friendships or tasks that create power struggles with my kids. And I focus only on the things that feed us. So the result is that my life looks on any given day, something like this. I wake up every morning to the tinkling sound of my sons unpacking the dishwasher. This is after they've woken up, dressed themselves and made their school lunch. I take the dog for a quick walk. I make breakfast for us and do a craft activity with my daughter, her favorite thing at breakfast time. The boys walk to school. I walk Anna to school. I work, but only on the things I like. The rest is done by more capable and inspired people. I meditate. I exercise often with one or other of my dear friends. I do most of the extramural runs on foot. I work some more. The kids do their homework in their own time. And when they're finished, they sign my name in their homework diaries, which is what I taught them to do on the first day they got homework. We then cook and have dinner together and we hang out in the evening before bed. This didn't happen by accident. I was very deliberate in stripping out all the unnecessary and designing our lives for efficiency and freedom. And now we live these principles consistently every day. Simplicity, design, consistency. If this res resonates with you, give it a try. Um, you know, like most things in life, you may find that by living these principles, you'll attract those with similar values in work and in life. It's been amazing and gratifying to see how those who align with our values seek caveat out for their legal work time and time again, and refer us to other like-minded people in business. The whole process is very easy and natural, and it takes absolutely no force. With this level of careful thought and deliberate action, vital change takes shape, and importantly, vital space opens up for life. It really, really is that simple. Sure, 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 sure. When is the book coming out, Yvonne? No. <laughs> I'm not sure how long that was, but I'm available for questions if anybody has any. That's uh, that's perfect. Thank you very much for that, guys. If there is a if, if there is a question, uh, see, there's a comment on goosebumps. Such a strong woman, Yvonne. Uh, well done for rising. Uh, coming from Banadis there, guys. If anyone has a, a a question in the last minute for Yvonne, you're welcome to to post it. Just kind of like reiterating, I've got notes here on simplicity and design and consistency. And the two words I am marking this talk uh, around would be being deliberate and being intentional with, with your life, the kind of life you want to lead and the kind of business you want to have. Um, yeah, lots of food for thought for all of us. Uh, everyone is just uh, just heaping praise on you in the, in the comments at the moment, Yvonne. Um, how did you get the boys to unpack the dishwasher from Christy? That's a good question. <laughs> Um, How did I get them to do it? Yes, literally, we'd love to hear. <laughs> it's just their job. I mean, it's just their job. And, you know, they the one does the top shelf and the other does the bottom yeah. shelf. And um, they each have a day. So if the month, if the day of the month is an odd day, then it's mm -hmm. Daniel's day. If the day of the month is an even day, then it's Joseph's day. And if it's your day, you get to sit in the front of the car or choose which shelf in the dishwasher you're going to do. So mm -hmm. there's no fighting about the, the front seat or the dishwasher. They just know who does the top shelf, who does the bottom shelf. And they've been doing it for years. And nobody sure. asks them and they just do it. Amazing. That's amazing. Sure. What, one question here on a, a tip or two for the design process, uh, the, the, second, uh, the second step you covered. Design has been, it, it's been amazing for me because it's given me this outlet for my own creativity that I didn't really know that I had. And um it, it really has been about finding solutions that are just make the most sense and that are the most simple. So, you know, for example, I had the privilege of making a decision about where to live and I found a place that was 300 meters from the one school and 700 meters from the other school. 
so that's now where I live. And then I built the house. And then, um, you know, I noticed that the, the boys' bedrooms are just above the scullery. So I thought, well, why don't we put in a laundry chute so that they can just drop their stuff in a little trap door in their cupboards and it can come out in the scullery. So that's, that's what we did, you know. So it's really, you know, every single decision has been very deliberate and it's been, you know, trying to aim to just remove every point of friction in our lives. Sure. Wow. Uh, Yvonne, this is, yeah, this is uh, definitely some of the most, uh, the most feedback I've, I've seen on one, one of these talks. This keynote is going to definitely go far and we want to see the book uh, and you are being promoted as president here also, I see. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for sharing with us. That's absolutely amazing. Appreciate the time uh, out of your open diary that you shared with us today. Um, great to have you as always and so inspiring to just listen to you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please click like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.